together to worship today uh, be reminded that's what we're here for that's what God wants us to do is to worship him Psalm 63 verse 7 and 8 for you have been my help and in the shadow of your wings I will sing for joy my soul clings to you your right hand upholds me sing for joy today in the house of the Lord Oh, 
job and uh, Pa what was that you were playing ukulele didn't she do a good old job on the ukulele <laughs> that was cool thank you um, I'm gonna ask Andy and James and Michael to come up here and join me while I'm talking 
Um, but wanted to just say um, there's a couple announcements. Um, Sunday evening service. Mike Abbott is starting a new series, and it's a six-week quest. You can read about it in the bulletin. I'll have it also in the newsletter when it comes out. So there's more information, and that's going to be starting. Larry, you can sit down. <laughs> Bill, when are you guys starting the Sunday evening services? Tonight? Okay. So that starts tonight. So it's something new. It's called um, The Hole in Our Gospel, and it's by Richard Stearns, who also started World Vision. And so I think it's going to be very cool. Um, so 6 o'clock tonight. PRC has baby bottles out on the... Um, in the lobby and they are doing a fundraiser um, so coins dollar bills whatever you got you can put in those bottles and bring them back Ruth Grass takes those or I'll take those but it, it's one of their biggest fundraisers through the year um, also save the dates on your bulletin check it out we got Easter dates already set so uh, walk of the cross the sunrise service we've got the Last Supper all the dates, all the time, well, the times will be in the next week. <laughs> but, so anyway, check out those dates. If you're a visitor here, we welcome you. Um, we do have visitor packets in the back. Um, we'd love to get to know you as you get to know us, too. So they're back there in the purple on the desk where you pick up the bulletin. So who's going first? I uh, just wanted to invite you. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not... Board of Christian Education, and really, we're trying to really encourage the, this our body, our, our family, um, to. Uh, I like to look at uh, our Christian walk, and when I'm trying to to uh, walk with, you know, in my case, I teach a, a high school Sunday school class. Uh, I like to look at it as, you know, there's. In, in moving the kids up the continuum, moving myself up to continue, let God do his work, uh, we need to educate kids in Christian doctrine for sure. Uh, uh, testimony is also a big part of, of what we do because uh, they need to hear our stories. I need to hear their stories. Uh, we need to hear others' stories. That's a big part of it. Uh, another part is service. I like to uh, provide opportunity for for young people, especially again, in my case, my focus uh, <clears throat> to serve in some way. Um, now, today, I want to invite you into that service. Part of your uh, the the role you have as a, as a, a believer in this body of Christ uh, is to serve. Um, God has gifted you uniquely and, uh, in that act in, in, in the, the process of that calling or that, uh, that gifting he's calling you to use those gifts can I get an amen alright so my invitation to you today is where is God calling you now I need you know as a, as a as the board of Christian Ed we need we have specific needs, and it may, that may not be what God is calling you to. But there is something God is calling you to. Okay. Uh, my appeal to you today: uh, we need um, uh, people who are willing to step into the process of Christian education, teachers, assistants to teachers. Um, I promise you that it won't, will it won't be overwhelming to you. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Really, if God is calling you to this, he'll equip you to do it. And as a board of Christian Ed, we're here to help. That's what we want to do, is we want to be part of that equipping. We want to give you the tools you need, or maybe it's just the confidence you need to step into it and say, hey, I can do this in Christ. So uh, I want you to think about that. I want you to pray about that. And I want you to answer the call, <laughs> okay? Whatever God is calling you to, we need some teachers. Also, we're going to uh, revive the bus ministry, okay? God has put that on our hearts. Uh, <clears throat> something we need to do. It's a great ministry. We've had some really uh, wonderful uh, uh, volunteers in that ministry. And uh, if 
that was you at one time, I'm calling you back. <laughs> um, but if that's something you can do, if you can drive a bus, it's not that hard, really. Uh, <clears throat> and I, you know, is God calling you to help us with that? That's happening. Step into that. You know, I'm, I'm all about Henry Blackaby's. Uh, when you see God working, that's his invitation to you. So we're just kind of pointing out where God's working for you, okay? So step in, step into that. That's part of our, our role as, as this, uh, you know, as serving this body of Christ. As, as, as members of this body, we belong to one another, amen? And uh, we are, we are uh, just calling you to that knitting together. My exhortation to you this morning: um, Pray, first and foremost, pray, because uh, God is—he's working in you. Amen, Miss Rose. He's working, right? He never leaves us alone. I don't care what age or stage you're in. He's always got something for us. And uh, so, pray about that. Thank you, Mike. Uh, talking on the youth, uh, Grand Nation Christian Camp. Uh, I got a little one up there. Abby's going to find it. I know it's a little early, but this is our mission spotlight giving month for Grand Mesa Christian Camp. As a trustee at the camp, uh, we did a lot of projects in the last two years, and we've got actually some more funding for another project that we've got to get it done this year also. Uh, we're all, always looking for funding to help us out up there. We're always looking for, whether it's youth, adults, anyone that wants to give their time to the camp and come up. We've got tons of projects. We've got a list already started. We go to our first meeting here in about two more weeks, so we're going to have a bunch of stuff there. Uh, we do have an open house coming in June. Uh, we have our regular Baptist camps in July, and those will all be coming up. We'll see more about that as we go along. But as a giving note uh, for Mission Spotlight, please help us with the camp because it's all about the youth again. Michael's doing the same thing. We're bringing the youth. We're trying to get them to camp. We're trying to know what's going to happen, and he's up for a second one. And the survey said... Um, we will be doing fundraisers for our young people for camps, okay? Uh, so put that in your cap, uh, in your brain somewhere. We're always looking for work projects and stuff like that. We will be doing a, a fundraiser here at the church. I know of at least one, uh, maybe two, that the Board of Christian Men wants to sponsor and get scholarships for kids. What we like to do is have kids earn their way to camp. You know, we don't like to just give them money. We like to provide opportunities for them to earn it. So we're going to do that. Uh, that camp is amazing. Uh, we've done some work up there. We're, we'll do some more work up there. And uh, that's maybe God's calling you into that. Amen. And, and we'll, we'll take you, too. Uh, again, if you need a ride or you want to go or, or you're looking for something to do, the uh, snow is, obviously we got some great snow up there this year. Praise God. Uh, the snow depths are very deep, in it, which is awesome. Uh, we'll take more. Uh, we're hoping still for a, a May, June, July uh, opening, obviously. Uh, usually we have to shovel in and shovel to get, get started, but uh, it's a great time. Again, what I'm asking is Mission Spotlight is just for camp, and we are going to raise money for kids to go to camp also, which is the uh, second Thank you all very much. Yeah, I, I have a little announcement as well, but it really, you know, Mike, it's a prayer. I want to ask you all to pray right now, throughout this service, and always, as Paul exhorts us. Um, for This announcement is for the entire church, but it's directed to the men of the church. Okay? There are so many opportunities. We just heard uh, Mike and Andy both talk about that. The question is, what's God calling you to? And uh, or two or two or three or four was places that He's calling you to. And for you men, what's keeping you from doing that? We got stuff in us sometimes that that keeps us from stepping out and trusting and stepping forward. Um, so what I want you to pray about is that. Uh, a lot of the men know I've been involved with a ministry for over 10 years now called Warrior at Heart. We need some bold warriors to step up. Okay, men. We have a camp called it's called Boot Camp. 
I guarantee you it's going to be different if you haven't been to one than, than any other men's camp you've been to. But it's about healing the stuff in us that stops us from stepping out and following Mike's calling or Andy's calling or whatever. The stuff that makes us hesitant. Do I really have what it takes? Can I do that? It's not about us. You know that. It's about God doing it through us. But this is about emboldening us the men in particular, you women set a fantastic standard for us. But sometimes us men don't stay, live up to that or rise up to that. This is an opportunity for men to, to experience at least a little bit of that healing. That's a lifelong thing, but a little bit of healing to get us to step forward in the freedom that Christ gives us. And to step up and be bold and take our place where we need to be in the church. So we have a camp coming up, a men's camp coming up uh, at Sky, oh, it's eight or nine miles this side of Lake City, Sky Ute. Sky Ute, yeah. I don't know how many times I've been there, still can't remember the name, but it's a beautiful place. It's uh, April 7th through the 10th. That's a Thursday through Sunday. Starts at dinner time on Thursday is done after lunch on Sunday. Men, if you are one of those, or you know someone who's one of those, that maybe has that little burn inside and, and, and doesn't, doesn't know for sure how to respond to it, please talk to me, because we'll throw some fuel on that little spark and get it to explode, all right? It's a great opportunity. Um, I just encourage you to please keep praying about that. We'd love to have a few guys from here go there and experience that. Thank you. Well, thank you for those new words to an old tune. Today, we look at John 14, 6. John 14, 6, it says, Jesus answered him and said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. We've looked at the way. We've looked at the truth. Hopefully you've been here for those last two messages. This is our third in a trilogy as we look at the life. The life which God gives to us. You know, life is a precious gift. It's not a commodity to be sold on the open market. Although human trafficking is alive today as much as it was back in Jesus day or at any time in history every life is precious and 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 realize that God has given us lives as his stewards to take care of our body our mind and the spirit which God gives to us I brought with me today what would you call this a life jacket or a life preserver yeah this helps you when you're drowning in too much water uh, but it it's not good for much else my wife said are you gonna sit on that today and I said no hemorrhoids are all gone I'm doing real good so getting along okay but we have that life preserver I I, I brought some water with me and this water doesn't do me any good when it's in the bottle you know, yeah, it feels cool, and so it helps me some there, but it's only when I get this water into me that it will do me some good, keep me from dehydrating, keep me from, uh, you know, growing weak. In fact, i take some water right now. Mm. Just as Jesus said He is the living water, He comes into the world it doesn't do us any good to look at Jesus from arm's length or look at Jesus over there. Jesus wants to occupy the temple. And the temple's not in Jerusalem anymore. That was destroyed in 70 AD. But it was destroyed because Jesus came as the living temple of God here on earth in order to impart to us the living water so that we would not thirst anymore. That we would have our thirst quenched spiritually with Him. So as we look at the life, 
that Jesus offers. He doesn't just say, I am a life or I have some life to give out to you. He's wanting to impart the life into each one of us. Webster's Dictionary defines life as the quality that distinguishes a vital functioning being from a dead body. Check your neighbor out. Make sure they have a pulse. Make sure they're still moving and all and, and that they are alive and you're not sitting by some dead body. You know, uh, God wants us to have life in church. All of us. Webster goes on to also say that life is the spiritual existence transcending physical death. I believe, and I, well, let me have some students come up here. Da and Pa, would you come and join me here? They're a part of a Saturday class that we're teaching discipleship. And I have a question. Hold the microphone right by your chin. Yeah. So, Da, where is Jesus today? Where here? <laughs> with us. So is he in this table here? Or in this pulpit here? Where is he? In our heart. In your heart. Okay, you can pass the microphone over to Pa because you got that answer right. Yeah. When Jesus comes and he gives himself to us, Pa, what part of the Godhead comes to live inside of us to take up residence? The Holy Spirit. Very good answer. All right. Hey, they've done so good. Shouldn't we ask them some more questions? Yeah. They have more questions for you. Yeah. See, we're taking them through kind of a Saturday school where they, along with some others, are learning uh, more than you'd learn just to get baptized, but how to walk with Christ, how, how to have Him as a part of it. And I'm hopefully it's complementing what Thaddeus is doing with the youth group and what Mike and Sherry are doing with the young people and also what Rich and Vicky are doing with our young singles, which this is a young single. Uh, she's still in high school, so don't look here. But if there are any single guys here, <laughs> this is a young single. Uh, so, so, Da, uh, what do you remember from our lessons that has been helpful for you as you walk with Jesus? One thing that you remember from our lessons. If we confess our sin, He's faithful to forgive us. Okay. Yes, that's right. Remember where that's found? You can say in the Bible. <laughs> first John, that's right. You can give it over there. Okay, it is First John, chapter 1, verse 9. That's our memory verse for this week, to come back next week and have that memorized. Some of our students already have it memorized. In fact, it sounds like you have most of it memorized already. Uh, pa, how about for you? What has been helpful for you in the class? Forgiveness. Forgiveness. Yeah, forgiveness comes from God. And, and, and the greatest forgiveness that we are given in our life is he forgives our sins because he invites us to come home with him. Okay, I'll let you go back to sit down where you were. Thank you very much. Okay, so yeah, when Jesus offers us the life, he offers us that forgiveness forever and that's not something to be taken for granted. You know, Jesus in John's gospel, as his words are written down and, and, and he shares that he is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through him, <clears throat> he makes an exclusive statement there. But Jesus has just been talking to his disciples about his coming death, that he's going to be separated from his disciples. <clears throat> Back in John chapter 3, verse 14, Jesus said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in Him may have eternal life. I don't know, just jog your memory. Moses lifting up a serpent in the wilderness. It was a 
serpent that he made out of bronze and he put it on his staff, on his pole that he had and he lifted it up and the people would look at that staff, it's in numbers, <coughs> they would live and not die from the plague. There was like 14, 15,000 people who died because snakes had come up and had bitten them and they died. But once Jesus put that staff together, the people looked on it and they had life. Jesus says, when the Son of Man be lifted up, He's talking about His own death, when He would be lifted up and nailed to the cross, that all of us who would look upon that would have life. Because Jesus died and each one of us were with Him on the cross. Have you ever imagined that? That you were with Him on the cross because He died for your sin. And He took the place of me on the cross of Calvary. Not only did He die on the cross, but He rose on the third day. It, it would mean nothing if He would have just died and remained dead. But He came alive. The power of God, the power of Christ over the stink of death. So that you and I don't have to go through death. Yeah, there's a little physical dying that goes on and sometimes it carries on for even weeks that I've seen. Sometimes it's instantly in a crash that life comes to an end. But yet, we just move on into eternity because when we have accepted Jesus into our life, He gives us eternal life from that point forward. Some of you here have had eternal life for years and years and years. Don't let it fade away though. Let it bring you more life because your spiritual life is being renewed daily. Because the Holy Spirit comes to indwell us and to transform our lives from living in this world that we are living in both worlds. This world now and eternity that comes up. You know, I said this water in the bottle doesn't do me any good. But once I drink it, it provides nourishment. It helps me. It's vitality. It's refreshing. And it's very good. Well, when... Jesus exchanged his life for my life. He deposited the Holy Spirit, like Pa said, into my life. And that Holy Spirit remains alive and active. I want to share with you that the, the Holy Spirit active in our life, when Jesus offers the life, is like turning our life over to Christ that happens in a once-in-a-lifetime commitment. Think about when you committed your life to Christ. Or if you have yet to do that, today could be the day of salvation. Where you invite Jesus into your life, you invite the Holy Spirit to come and indwell you. Turning your life over to Christ is a once-in-a-lifetime commitment. But there's another part of the key that I think some churchmen never get to this point or, or they practice it for a short time but they don't do it consistently in their lives. When Jesus gave His disciples what we call the Lord's Prayer, it's more the sinner's prayer, how often did He say we needed to eat the bread of life? Daily to take the bread in. Daily we need to do that. I'm going to tell you, and this is a write down for you, you need to take notes when you're in church because you're forgetful when you get out of here. Turning your will over to Christ requires daily recommitment. Think about that. If you don't daily recommit, and, and I know some uh, folks that are part of our Celebrate Recovery ministry, they say it's not just daily commitment, I've got to do it moment by moment. With each breath, I've got to commit myself to overcome my habits, hang-ups, and my hurts from the past, that I have committed myself to Christ. Our will is where our love comes from. Our will is where our choices come from. Our will is, is, is how we live. Am I living self-controlled or selfishly? 
If we live under self-control, that self-control comes from the Holy Spirit. It's part of the fruit of the Spirit that He provides in order for us to live. Now think about it. If you are a believer and a follower in Christ, if you've committed your life to Jesus Christ, are you daily recommitting your will to God? Because a will left unchecked will, just like water, move to the lowest point. I heard a brother exclaim within the last week, he says, I need this fellowship. I need this accountability. I need to be around others in church. And we do. That's why the, the church in virtuality will never satisfy or replace the church coming together, body to body, person to person, life to life. It's because we can hold one another accountable in those ways. And we fill up our lives with those things that bring about life to us. Because God wants us to live His life through us to others. I hear agreement out there with somebody I'm connecting with. Praise God, He's not sleeping today. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's, he's tucked in. Back to the message. In Romans 12, 32, Jesus says, And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show them by what kind of death he was going to die. And we know what kind of death that Jesus died. But think of it, when you see Jesus on the cross, he draws us to him because of what he's doing there, what he has done for us. Uh, and he doesn't remain on the cross today. That's why our crosses don't have the crucifix, don't have Jesus hanging on them. It's because he went to the grave, dead for three days, and he rose, and he's alive. And he lived here on earth for 40 days, and he lived in eternity forever and ever. And he's calling you and me to join him in heaven one day. And that's a graduation, so don't look at death as being the end. It may be the end of this existence. It may be the end of who you are physically in this world, but it's not the end. It's part of that transition from life into eternity. Praise God. I, there's so many, it seems like the longer I live, there's more and more I think of that I want to do when I get to heaven. Now, I know God might say, hey, I don't have heaven planned for you. I got a new earth for you. You got to go out and uh, work that new earth. But I know if he sends me out into the new earth, it's going to be the same kinds of stuff I'm doing here right now, except it'll be perfect. I won't stick my foot in my mouth. I, I, I won't sin against those I love. I, uh, because God will have all of it then. And so I'm so excited about being able to go there. Jesus claims that he is the source of life. He is the exclusive life in John chapter 11 verse 25 you know that verse say it with me I am the resurrection and the life whoever believes in me though he die yet shall he live that's right back in John chapter 1 verse 4 Jesus said in him was life and the life was the light of men we sang about letting the light shine in us letting that shine out we can't do it just by giving our life Christ in a once in a lifetime commitment we've also got to turn our will over to Christ in a daily recommitment uh, the verse that I would say for that would come from Luke's gospel chapter 9 verse 23 Jesus said to them if anyone wants to come after me let him deny himself take up his cross daily and follow me doesn't that make sense? That we have something we have to do every day. We have to recommit our will, not our life. Our life's settled. It's taken care of once we're in Christ. But we have to recommit our will to thy will, the Father's will to be done. And he'll remind you, if, if, if you keep the window clean between you and God, if you don't let sins mount up and become a barrier between you and God, 
but you confess those sins and receive his cleansing power, he'll remind you. He'll tell you when you're, hey, James, you're not exactly following me. i give you an example of, of, of something that God's been working on me just, just in this last week. Um, I, was, I was at a, a ministry on Friday night and uh, I saw a brother that was hurting and he hadn't been there for a while and so I talked to him during a break and I just said hey let me pray for you and I prayed for him there but it's in the middle of this ministry meeting and a ministry leader came up to me afterwards and says we don't do that here I said oh yeah you gasped okay all right that's what I did too what we don't pray he said this is a recovery ministry and we're all here for our own recovery. And if you're here you, and you're praying for someone else at this time, it takes him off of his own recovery and he gives it to you and you're carrying that cross for him. And as, as he said that, there was a part of me, my flesh, <laughs> that wanted to act out, wanted to walk out, wanted to... But there was another part of me God's Spirit that said this ministry leader is just putting me into my place and God help me to understand I know this brother loves me and I know that he has good intent for me you know I could have said but 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 it's praying no it was great I, I, I confess later I had to eat some humble pie and humble pie tastes a lot like mud pie. Anybody ever eat some mud pie? Blah, it's not real good. It may look like it's a mocha chocolate pie, but it don't taste like a mocha chocolate pie. But that's the edge that God is working on me. And, and I just receive that as God's grace into my life. And I, I will, you know, I had another brother call me up after the meeting asked me how I was doing I, and he had noticed this little interaction going on and I think he was just trying to get me into like a little pity party sort of thing and I just said hey brother he was doing what he needed to do and I know God's working on me and and I didn't allow that brother to take me to another place back into my flesh I, but I brought him with me into the spirit and and we just rejoiced in that conversation Praise God for how He works on us. In John chapter 6, verse 57, uh, John chapter 6, verse 66, easy to remember. I, I call that the most depressing verse in all of Scripture because John 6, 66 says, many of His disciples left and stopped following after Jesus. But in verse 57 before that it says, as the loving Father sent me, I live because of the Father. So whoever feeds on me, he also will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like the bread the fathers ate and died. Whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. And it's Jesus is the bread of life. He's the living water. We can feed on that. Paul also was in agreement with Jesus. Uh, when he said in Colossians 3 verse 4, when Christ who is your life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. See, Paul understood that his life didn't matter, even though he was climbing the ladder of success as Saul of Tarsus, he was climbing that ladder, but that ladder was set up in the wrong place. When Jesus met him on the road to Damascus, man, he knocked that ladder off, knocked him off his high horse, and, and he got a hold of him. And Saul, who became Paul, the apostle, knew that it wasn't about him anymore or his successes or where he wanted to be. It was all about Jesus. In fact, God bless you. In Philippians chapter 1, verse 21, Paul got to the point where he could say to the Philippian church, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain that's where we all need to get to the place and how do we do that daily 
recommitting our will to Christ. We would follow in the same footsteps because He delivers us from death. Jesus also said later on after John 14 verse 6 and verse 19, the second part of it says, because I live, you also will live. And, and that's what I'm staking my life on and I pray that you will and I pray that we as the body of Christ will follow the head, Jesus Christ, the head of this church, that as He lives and leads, that we will follow Him and live as well. That's in the Scripture. You know, Jesus came to deliver the children of Israel from the bondage they were living in and they didn't even know it. See, when Moses came, do you think the Israelites knew they were living in bondage? For sure, they were in Egypt. The Egyptians told them when to get up, and when to go to bed, where to work, what to do. They knew they were in bondage. They cried out to God, send us a Savior. And God sent Moses, this 80-year-old man, that he had left the area for, because he had murdered an Egyptian who was beating up on the slaves. The next day he shows up and the slaves say, are you going to kill us too? Because they were fighting with each other. And Moses got anxious and he found out that his way of delivering the Israelites was not God's plan. It took him 40 years to figure it out. But then God brought him back and he wasn't doing his own will, he was doing God's will. And he delivered the people of Israel out of that bondage. Now, some... <coughs> 1,200 years later, the children of Israel are in bondage and they don't see it. But it's the Roman Empire. No, it's not the Roman Empire that's holding them in. It's their own sinful flesh. It's their own will. They've gotten so religious that they didn't know about a relationship with God. Yeah, they looked for the Messiah, but they weren't looking for Jesus, the true Messiah. They were looking for something out there. And when they found Jesus, the reason why they were so angry with Him and they wanted to crucify Him, they wanted to kill Him, they wanted Him to be murdered, is because they could not recognize God reaching out to them. And sometimes we get that way because we build up so many sins in our life that it's became a barrier between us and God and we can't see the life that's in front of us. I'm thankful that God is showing us that and we have the opportunity, are we going to exercise our will for God or for our own selfishness? The deliverance that Jesus brought was not a political, an economic, or a social deliverance, but a true deliverance from a life of bondage to sin and death. Jesus came to set people free or to find freedom from their existence in this world. That leads me to the second point, that eternal life starts the moment we believe in Jesus and it lasts forever. Romans 8 verse 11 is a good verse that helps you understand that. Verse 11 says, If the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. So when the Spirit comes to dwell in us, it's not just that He's off in a corner room, but it's the Holy Spirit dwelling, being a part of our life, the main part of our life, as we become more like Christ. See this water in this bottle becomes a part of me only when I take it in. And the living water of Jesus Christ only becomes a part of us when we take Him into our soul. And the Holy Spirit is there active, is an ingredient within us. See, the water is not separated from me once I drink it in. It becomes a part of me and it keeps me hydrated and it keeps me uh, ready, alive and, and able to do the work which God gives me to do. The Holy Spirit has been imparted to us and He wants to keep you alive in the Spirit. Keep you alive following God. Keep you alive when God wants to point out through somebody else that 
He wants to correct you or to rebuke you or to train you in His righteousness. Now how is Jesus our life today? Think about your life. How is Jesus your life today? Well, He lives in me by His Spirit. Galatians 2.20 is a great verse to memorize. Some of you have it memorized already. Galatians 2.20 I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. The life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loves me and gave Himself up for me. Doesn't that make sense? He becomes our life because He lives in us. Also, God's Spirit dwells in me. He's taken up residency. He's staked a claim to James Conley. I am not my own, but I belong to God in heaven. And He's given me this deposit from heaven called Jesus. In Corinthians, Paul wrote to the church there and he said, Do you not know that your body is a temple of the living Lord? And He dwells in you? We need to recognize that in all the choices that we make with our body. If we are choosing to use our bodies in abusive or ways that are outside of what God's Word says for it, guess what? We're not submitting our will. We're not committing our will to follow Him. We're exercising our self-will. And we're acting selfishly. We've been bought with a price, so we should let Him lead and guide us. We have become one with Him when He comes to live in us. So the last point I would just give to you is living in hope as Jesus' people, we can share this life with others also. See, God never gave us His Spirit, gave us Jesus for us to keep it for ourselves, but it's for all nations, all people everywhere, all of us to have this life within us. You know, in John chapter 6, it says many people stopped following after Jesus. He asked the twelve if they were going to leave as well. And somebody spoke up. It was Peter. What did he say? Lord, to whom shall we go? For we have found in your words eternal life. And we have believed and come to know that you're the Holy One of God. Where are you going to go? You know, God has brought us together. Uh, one thing I know is the church is not a perfect place filled with perfect people that have it all together. We are all on the road to becoming more Christ-like. And that is not finished until the finished work comes and we're transformed from this physical existence because we're in a fallen world, we have a fallen nature, but I don't have to let my fallen nature lead me through life. Too many people in the world, that's all they have. So they need us as examples of living differently from the people in the world. Living by faith, trusting in God, and His Holy Spirit will lead us as we commit ourselves to Him every day. The stress of the verse, John 14, 6, falls upon the way. Thomas is wanting to know what way to go. And Jesus said, go my way. Go my way. Uh, he also says, is the truth. And the truth is in the person of who Jesus is. It's not the commandments. Jesus fulfilled all the commandments in himself. And so we don't have to try to keep those rules. All we have to do is enter into the relationship with He's offering to us. He's offering to every one of us. And I don't care how young or how old you are or what ethnicity we are. He comes to us in our own language and He invites us to come into His family. As we come into His family, He gives us the Father and also the Holy Spirit to live in us. The life well, we do life together. Now, the church is not a community of finished saints. Uh, we're all on the way. And Eugene Peterson in his book, The Practice of Resurrection, says we keep company with the men and women that God chooses. Look around the sanctuary. Look around to the people that God has placed here. We are the body of Christ. 
But if Christ not be the head of us, we should disband and go our separate directions. Christ is the head over the church and He invites us to be His body. And just like Mike came up and he was saying, there's places, there's, there's, there's roles that we need everyone filling and using their spiritual gifts to the glory of God. Yes, there are. But we've got to get the vertical relationship right with God. And that's not just a once-in-a-lifetime decision to place my life in God's hands. That is an everyday recommitment of my will to thy will be done in me and in us. Pray that over our whole church. Pray that our church will all walk in unity together. Even though some of us are at different places and other things going on. But when we hear someone is suffering, we will like move towards that person who is dealing with suffering. If we hear somebody else is rejoicing, we'll move and we'll celebrate with those who are rejoicing. But we need to be here, not just once a month, not just at Christmas and Easter. We need to be here consistently and plugging in and using the talents and the abilities that God's given us to infect or affect the whole body of Christ. Now, I know there may be some listening to this and uh, you haven't been in the church or in this place for a long time and you say, what about me, Pastor? I'm, I'm way out here. Yes, God will draw you in. Uh, he will bring you back into the fold, His sheep folk. Because his sheep know his voice. We hear his voice. And don't go pouting away when you don't get your, your rights heard. Uh, just know that the body is an organism, not an organization. And it will grow. And if you are hurting, we have a tendency to come alongside when you're hurting. If you're going through a great victory, we want to celebrate that. Because all of us go through both mountaintops and valleys. But always with Christ and with His Holy Spirit being that energizing agent from within. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank You for being here today. Thank You for sending Your Son to guide our way. To show us Your truth. And to offer to us life. Lord, if there's anybody here... In the, within the sound of my voice right now that has not received this eternal life from you, they could do it even through this prayer. You could pray a prayer something like this. Lord, I trust that you are God and that you've come into this world and offered to me eternal life. I want to receive that life in, into me. I want to receive your Holy Spirit as a deposit from heaven into my soul today. I understand that it's not just a feeling, but I understand this truth that has been shared with me today. And I repent of my sin. I turn my life over to you. Not just confessing, but I feel great sorrow for the sin that I have committed against you and against my fellow man. And I pray, O oh God, with your help and my daily recommitting my will over to you that I will no longer walk in the flesh but walk according to your Spirit. In Jesus' name, Amen. Also, I'd let you know that if you've already committed your life to follow God but you have not been recommitting your will daily to His will be done, start today. Start right here, right now. And let it keep on going in your life. To God be the glory. Amen. That's the end of our service today. But if you'd like to stick around, we have Sunday school and we have family time groups happening all over the building. Just ask someone in the lobby and they'd be glad to show you where to go. Stick around. Today is our last soup on Sunday, I think. So the ladies are downstairs, so when we walk out into 
the lobby area. You're going to smell the sweet aroma, but we're not eating it right now. We have about an hour, but it will be eaten. So stick around, uh, enjoy some fellowship with one another, check out some of our classes. We're glad you chose to be with us today. Glory be to God. Amen.